Hello everybody, this is the pep meeting for the integrated listening system. We're so glad that you're here and we're going to be talking about our program that we've had at um, Antioch Charter Academy 2 for the past four years. We're going to um, start off with a video and just a slight introduction. We have some parent um, volunteers that have had ILS training and Mimi Kessler is our aide who's going to kind of show us some activities and Gwen Conley has uh, put together frequently asked questions and Pam Goodman is going to give a little bit of stories about her children that have come through the program. So we're going to start off with um, a quick video that we're going to watch and then a little bit of introduction of ILS. Staying Healthy on 7 News, a breakthrough therapy developed here in Denver is helping those with autism, ADD, and other sensory processing disorders. As 7 News reporter Doug Shepman shows us, it's using music to enhance occupational therapy and change lives. Over the past year, five-year-old Arielle Anderson has participated in occupational therapy for a sensory processing disorder and language delay. In this session, she's pretending to fish from a sailboat. Working on gross motor skills, balance, and communication, all the while listening to... Nice job! If you can imagine having to process sound at different frequencies at the same time as trying to focus on moving your body, it's like a brain workout. Using classical music of varying frequencies, integrated listening system stimulates multitasking in the brain based on the concept of neuroplasticity. Which is the ability of the brain to change its function, its organization, its growth, and make new neural connections in response to sensory input. Dr. Ron Minson helped identify the benefits of auditory stimulation when combined with occupational therapy. He says the applications are numerous. We know that attention deficit disorder, autism, learning disabilities, sensory processing disorders, attention, concentration, all of these are issues that require optimal brain functions. Yeah. And this therapy has kind of helped uh, tremendously. Ariel's father says ordinary tasks like getting dressed or even choosing a flavor of ice cream used to cause her to break down. But after 30 sessions of therapy incorporating ILS... She was dressing herself, a lot more responsive to adult cues, following directions. When that foundation is established and working well, then you're reading, logical processing, memory, organization, emotional control and regulation. All of that's possible. Doug Shepman, 7 News. Uh, the big question, what is ILS? And for the biggest all-inclusive answer is, it's a multi-sensory program, as you saw in the videos there. Um, it's visual, it's auditory, it's movement, and it's to improve brain function. And recently they've been talking a lot about neuroplasticity, and that's the ability of the brain to reorganize itself and to form new neural um, connections and pathways. And it happens throughout life. But that's really the premise of ILS. Once with all the research we have with brain research and the newer imaging that they can do with brains, they see that some of these changes are taking place. One of the questions before we get um, started is, have you seen children who engage in behaviors as if they were asking for, help me with regulating responses? Many, of our, many children just get so overwhelmed with emotion, it's very difficult for them to do self-regulation. Um, they need support with confidence and feelings of self-control. They are looking for development and concentration and attentiveness and improvement with concentration. And that's something with ILS. You're going to see that all of this is really part of the inner ear. And the inner ear, um, you won't be able to see really well, but there's these little hair cells. And think of the little hair cells there that are picking up the... Um, all of the neural sing and all the, the, the signals that are coming through, think of them like a spaghetti noodles. They're supposed to be looking like before they get in the boiling water and they're straight and the signals can just go right through them and they push it onto the auditory co cortex. Well, because of ear infections, because of developmental delays, uh, because of environmental factors, Many of those hair cells on many children look as if they've already been boiled in the water because of the ear infections or the liquid that is inside the, um, the inner ear. And it's kind of like those spaghetti noodles <coughs> after it's been in the boiling water and they're kind of just kind of falling over so that there's not efficiency of the signal even going through. It's coming through fine. They're, the child's hearing fine, but it's in the processing piece when it gets to the inner ear 
some of their hair cells are kind of flaccid. They're kind of fallen over a little bit and kind of limpy. And so it's not efficient there and it's not going to be efficient going through to the, to the brain. So that's one of the biggest pieces that ILS gives them a workout and they get back to being straight and strong and that they can have efficient hearing and processing. Mimi's going to kind of demonstrate <coughs> a little bit about what we do in our, um, in our ILS sessions at school. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mimi Kessler. I'm the ILS aide here. My daughter is actually fourth grader here. And uh, I'm going to talk about what I do every day with the kids for ILS. Um, first thing is uh, I work with somewhere between 16 to 20 kids a day. Um, mainly from primary and elementary, from those are K through third graders. And uh, I work with four kids at a time. And they see me twice a day for 30 minute sessions, uh, 30 minutes in the morning and 30 in the afternoon. And we're, they're listening to uh, these ILS programs, these music programs, uh, while we're doing the activities. And what I'm gonna have is this is, yeah, this is the Alice headset, <coughs> and I have one of the students that I work with today, Haley, hi Haley, and she's going to help me with demonstrating. So this is the headset that we use, and each child, uh, most of the kids that start in ILS, they start at the first program, which is the sensory motor, and then move on to the uh, attention concentration and the last program is the reading um, processing. So Haley is on attention and concentration and we'll set her up and demonstrate some of the activities that we do. So we set her up and all the kids are on different programs depending on when they started. Uh, Okay, so they come to me, <coughs> I get them all set up, and we usually have pre-planned activities, which um, I think we have a binder of all the activities that we started collecting last year uh, that Mrs. Dubisky actually pulled from different books. <coughs> this is one of the books that we use. This is a playbook from ILS, which they provided with the ILS system, and so there's a bunch of different activities that we pull from that, and also from these two other books called Successful Movement Challenges and Movement Education. So we pull from both of these books to do different activities. Now some of the things that we do, let's see, we'll have, this is a bounce, or like a little saucer, and it will have, Haley, can you come over here and stand on the board for me? So they're working on Trying to balance, not keep your child too much. And one of the activities sometimes we do is we'll toss while balancing. Toss back and forth. So that's just one of the activities. And, and they'll do this individually, or they do this with a partner, tossing back and forth. So toss it to me. And I toss back, catch. So again. Okay. Okay. Um, also, we have scoopers that we work with. <coughs> we work on catching. Okay, ready? Oh, good. So that's another activity that we do. Um, what else? We have also. I do that last. We also have um, pogo sticks that they use. We have a balance board. They work on balancing, and they'll bounce and walk across the board and work on balancing on the board and catching. Uh, sometimes we set up the whole obstacle course with jump ropes and hula hoops, so they'll run through that and do balance beam. Um, also, last year we incorporated juggling. Mrs. Bella, who's our music teacher, uh, kind of brought this idea to us about juggling with these juggling balls. 
and I guess it was her father that did some research about it that uh, there was a link between doing juggling and tracking and reading. So what we started doing was having the kids, first, the first thing we started doing was really doing bounce and catch. You do the bounce and catch for me. Like this. That's fine. Balance and catch. So see, she's doing it like this, catching it this way. And a lot of the kids who are, are at a, uh, one of the last programs are more advanced, they'll catch it this way. This is a more advanced way of catching. But they usually start off this way. And then what we'll do is practice <coughs> toss and catch. Working on toss and catch. And then, what are the other things we do? Um, we'll do, oh, let's bounce it to each other. Ready? And bounce it to you and catch. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Eye on the ball. I do a one bounce. Catch, yes, good. That's to me. Good. Now, um, um, Haley is still working on with the one ball. So we have some kids that actually can do uh, juggling with two. And that basically is not the typical juggling where you would cross. Uh, basically, you, you juggle in a circle. So usually if you're more dominant with the right hand, you basically go in this direction. So that's what we work our way up to from the one ball to the two balls, and then we work on bouncing, juggling bouncing as well. So that's something that was introduced last year by Mrs. Bella that we're incorporating into the ILS as well. Um, I think that's basically kind of some of the ideas of what we do. There's a bunch of different activities, but that's kind of an idea of what we do every day. And they do a half hour in the morning and a half hour mm -hmm. in the afternoon. There is a schedule, it's all, um, predetermined with their teachers and we uh, we adjust that schedule if it gets to be a, a problem where they uh, if they're missing something that has just started coming up in uh, their studies so we really work with the schedule but for the most part it's a pretty typical st uh, schedule that they have for at least the, the three months that they're doing a particular program and this is sometimes students are inside especially if it's a rainy day and um, they're just doing drawing, they may do painting, they may do um, Play-Doh and sewing and they do pattern blocks. We add different things for them to do inside the classroom if the, it's not a good, um, good one. My name is Gwen Connolly and I have two students here, Evan and Kennedy. Kennedy is a third grader and Evan is kindergartner. And Kennedy started the ILS program in 2008 when we started it at our school. Um, so some of the difficulties that she had at the time was difficulty identifying tone. Like she couldn't tell if somebody was being mean or if somebody was, she couldn't identify tone. She couldn't, she would come home and say that somebody was being mean to her and she would, I would ask her what they said and then I would say, that doesn't sound like they were being mean. So she couldn't identify tone, whether people were playing or, or being mean. The other thing she was having difficulty was with reading and um, seeing sight words and um, at one stage I was desperate and went looking on dyslexic websites. I, I was at my wit's end. I didn't know um, how I was going to get this kid to identify sight, sight words. Other things that she hated was loud noises. Um, she had poor handwriting, um, hated having her hair brushed. That hasn't changed what I was. She still hates getting her hair brushed. Um, but they were her main difficulties. And after going to the training, myself and Mimi and um, Pam and Mrs. Dubitsky went to the training class in February. After going to the training, I realized that it was all connected. It was all connected to sensory processing and really how ILS had benefited her. And it wasn't until I went to the training that I kind of figured it all out. So at this point, she's now excelling in reading. She's above grade level in reading. Um, she has beautiful handwriting. Um, she tolerates loud noises, although she doesn't like it that much. She can tolerate it a whole lot more, but she still hates getting her hair brushed. Um, 
So I don't think Guy Les can help her with that. <laughs> so I've seen, I've seen at the time, it, it, because her issues felt like they were somewhat mild, it was hard to really put a finger on it and say ILS was, was the answer. So then we're moving on to Evan. <laughs> Evan is, has similar things to Kennedy, um, hates loud noises, really bad handwriting, um, really poor pictures, um, hates loud noises, um, doesn't like having his hands dirty, all sensory processing. And <coughs> he has been, he started the program this year just in kindergarten this year um, and just had our recent um, conference with Mrs. Dubisky and she showed me samples of his current pictures and his current handwriting and while you know it's not he's not um, going to be an artist anytime soon it has improved so it really has sealed it for me that ILS is working and it's not a fact for me because it has worked on both of my children. Um, I guess part of, well, when we went to this um, training course and I spoke to Mrs. Dubitsky, the part that I felt was missing was questions that as a parent I, I wanted answers to. So I put together uh, questions that I thought parents would want to know. And this is, it's gonna be on the website and Mrs. Dubitsky will send it out, but it's um, it basically one of the main questions that I'm sure everybody's thinking is, can't I just do these exercises at home and listen to the same music that they listen to at school? Well, you can do the exercises at home and listen to the music, but you won't have the same effect because the whole program um, hinges on the bone conduction in the head, the full frequency music, all inter intertwined. So you could listen to music and you'll enjoy it, but it won't take the place of ILS. And there was other questions, kind of like, how does Mrs. Dubinsky <coughs> pick the children? Um, how does she, how, how, who decides? Um, so these were all questions that I kind of came up with and researched the answers and talked to Mrs. Dubinsky about, and she gave me the insight as to how it's done. But one thing that I, I do really want to point out to our parents is how, whether you're for it or against it, how lucky we are to have it available. Um, we get it for free, included in school, we don't have to stay after school, we don't have to go to another location, and at the moment there's 5,000 therapists or 5,000 therapists or practitioners of ILS in the United States. It's in 30 countries, and at the moment, if you were to go to a private therapist or a private practitioner, occupational therapist, you know, um, um, it would cost a, upwards of $100 an hour. And the recommendation is two hours a week. So that's, that's $200 a week. To rent out the equipment from a practitioner, it's upwards of $250 a month. So I just, I think that we're so lucky to have something on campus where our children can benefit so greatly from this, um, and I feel like we don't we don't really know that. Um, so they were just just some my takeaways from the program. Both kids have excelled, um, and where it was kind of Kennedy was, you, you could kind of say, well, I don't know if it was ILS. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that with the increased handwriting, the better handwriting and better pictures it has to be <coughs> through ILS. One of the questions that came up is how do we how do we select ILS students and um, it has been a team effort teachers and, um, and myself we get together and we talk about uh, strengths and needs of different students and how um, what are some things school-wide we could do to uh, help them in whatever there's they might be needing the support in and so it is a team effort. In time, we're hoping that um, perhaps we can be an ILS school in which all kindergarten will, that will just be part of their everyday, you know, experience and probably will go into first grade. And right now, though, we are doing lots of different age groups, K to three. And we have discussed older students, the four through eight. We um, just haven't expanded to that point yet. Uh, in time, it will be enough of our, IL, our students have come through the system that they've had the ILS experience. 
over time they will need boosters and what what that means is they may take a two to three week um, course again with it and um, they don't have to start all over again is they just have different places they could start in the program just to have their brain to have um, just a little bit more energy that's what they're talking about that many times the, the ADD brain is not energized the ear is the battery to the brain and what they mean is the the cortex is very nourished by high frequency the brain is nourished by high frequency sounds and students that are having trouble with um, auditory processing or many times learning how to read or to be able to take direction in a noisy environment their high frequency efficiency is what is not as exact and that's what um, nourishes the brain that keeps the brain alert <coughs> is the high frequencies and um, so and the other piece to show is the brain is not comp at one point they thought it was um, carp what word am I thinking of compartmentalized <laughs> um, and but it's not there's a, as you see with the little yellow lights in the brain there for it shows that different parts of the brain um, are working together whenever the, as we're thinking or whatever we're doing it's just not just one part of it and in the past also the cortex is called our thinking brain and schools we've always kind of gone to the cortex that's our go-to place but we're finding it's a lot of the structures behind the cortex called the subcortical structures the cerebellum you'll hear about the basal ganglia you'll hear about um, the auditory cortex those play such key roles and especially the cerebellum there's three systems that ILS um, addresses to, uh, to really help with some of these behaviors and it's what Mimi explained is there's movement there's auditory and the visual simulation stimulation the juggling they're learning to track and that is so important for um, reading and also knowing where the teacher is where that voice is coming from many times students hear hear sounds and voices they're either startled or they just don't know where it's coming from the visual stimulation really helps them hone in on where that voice is coming from of that sound the auditory stimulation is coming from the ILS systems and movement stimulation is when we're doing all the activities and you put all three together and that's what really builds the neurophysiological systems to for the ability to, to receive information to process it and to be able to express it and children that are having trouble with any of those pieces there's one of these pieces are out of sync or there's a combination of and that's where ILS with the uh, bone conduction and the music the music is specially designed music yes it's Mozart but they'll have a gating process where um, it comes in louder or um, softer they've taken out certain frequencies and then they put it back in so that students auditory system is really working hard the hair cells are working really hard to pick up those sounds so and you hear the gating the gating when you hear the um, the songs not on every single one but many selections you know when they start gating it and it's kind of mid piece of the of the program a sensory motor is the very beginning what happens is it's the sensory motor has the lower sounds it calms them it keeps them grounded and then it moves up the frequencies the auditory and concentration the attention concentration there are different frequencies and the highest frequencies are in the middle frequencies is the reading and auditory processing so the history of ILS Dr. Tomatis was a French researcher that started all of this with the opera singers because they were losing certain ranges of their voices and your voice can only produce what your ear hears so for example when children are having trouble saying certain letter sounds it's because they're not truly hearing those letter sounds and sometimes in younger children like at two years old will have an ear infection where maybe that's where the brain was ready to receive you know the the s sound or the the v sound and so they're having trouble reproducing it because they're not even hearing that sound dr minson is the um the the person who has taken ils uh and took it a lot from dr tomatis and he studied under dr tomatis and the reason he did he had a daughter that was in a teenage um, like 16 year old that was having extreme trouble 
with academics, with behavior, with emotional <coughs> problems. And um, he's a neuropsychologist, and to think that he was, he couldn't even help his own daughter. So he went and got help with Dr. Tomatis. And then when he brought it back to America, it would take a huge room for all the equipment that was needed. So it was his wife, Kate Minson, and um, Randall, one of their um, business associates, that took it and brought it down to the size that we have here with the iPods and just the headphones, and we don't need the big, big processors that used to store all the music. It's all on a iPod now. Um, anyway, at ILS, um, when it was brought to ACA2, we had training in 2008 and 09. There was a couple of uh, teachers that were trained, um, Marianne Dubitsky and um, Lee Berg and um, Sarah McLean. And uh, they're teaching at ACA right now, but we were trained first with these uh, systems, and then we, that was like in November, and we had a spring launch network are the ones that purchased the systems, our first two systems. And then in 2009-10, two more systems were purchased. And we were beginning with um, a bigger parent volunteer base, but it was still coming out of kindergarten. And um, then the following year, 2010-11, uh, we were starting ILS all day with the primary and elementary, and the primary and elementary teachers were the ones that were instrumental in putting the headsets on and taking them off and getting everybody where they were. By 2011, we knew we needed an aid, so Mimi came on board, because this was a very overwhelming year to try it all day long to have that coming through and doing that. And then 2012-13, uh, last spring and this year, we have 10 graduates, and it's our first year that we are trying two groups of ILS students, where they started in the fall, and we have a new group that's starting in the spring, and some of them had the previous program in the fall. So this is this year we're looking at that. Pam Goodman is going to just kind of give us a little bit of um, stories of what she got from the um, training that she attended. Well, I, I found the trainings to be really interesting. Um, in that it kind of went along with some of the things I already had learned. What I had already learned in the child development um, classes I had taken at the community college, which weren't exactly along the same lines of what I had planned to do with my education. I had originally planned to go into teaching, um, but this brain development thing is not something they teach teachers teachers, or at least in the teaching program, they don't teach teachers, maybe special ed teachers, but not teachers for the regular public classrooms don't get um, information on how a brain develops in a child and how it progresses and grows and such as that. So um, when, I went to, when I went to the program, I saw a large, uh, a big correlation between what I had already learned about cross-body movement and um, brain waves and um, the way the, the brain makes its pathways um, and how, you know, um, there's always been a lot of discussion about a baby that doesn't crawl may have some disabilities when they grow up um, rather than a baby, in other words, a baby moves right to walking. And that has something to do with vision and I'm not sure what else, you know, and a couple of my kids never crawl. Um, but I could kind of see how maybe that may have had something to do um, with the program, which has to do with the vision tracking and such as that. Um, when I originally had was approached to put Leland in, um, in when he was in kindergarten, um, Leland and Haley, I didn't know anything about the program. Um, I was like a lot of parents, I just went on trust. and um, But I figured if... Um, if our school was presenting it, it must be a good thing. And um, what was described to me was not something. I didn't feel like I was being told, oh, you need to put your kid on Ritalin. <laughs> like, you know, hey, you know, we've got this new activity that's coming along and it might be beneficial for your child. And so I was really on board with it. And the more I've learned about it and the more I participated with the program, the more I am sold on it. I feel like a salesman now because I can see where one of my kids um, had a lot of difficulty um, because of her early experiences. She was placed in front of a TV a lot. She was not, um, she didn't hear a lot of things um, 
voices she was never spoken to but around you know um, so she didn't have certain language things and I have seen such a growth um, since then um, in this um, with the ILS um, in those categories you know language um, speech balance um, uh, sometimes she had a lot of large motor skill lapses and I could see where she's really improved um, with that um, as you can see, she did a, um, a great job with the catching and stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm really thrilled with the program, and I'm all for it. Um, this last fall, I did not know that Leland wasn't participating with ILS. And um, I was like, what is up with this kid? When I first conference, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't handle Leland. You know, what is up with this kid? And I didn't know he was in an ILS. When I found out he wasn't an ILS, then I was like, that must be why. You know, I could really see how it had affected his movement. Now, it's not, it's not perfect. It's not a miracle. But I can see how it has made a change in his behavior, his focus. For him, he either gets too focused on something and can't switch to the next thing, or he can't focus at all and he's all over the place. And in the fall, he was just all over the place. And it seems to be improving now that he's doing the ILS. I don't know how many weeks he's yeah. been doing it. Third week, second week? Third week. Third week, and I can already see a bit of a change in behavior and in um, his organization of how he, he does things. It's not perfect, but I can see a definite improvement. So it's fun to hear all the different interpretations. We see it as teachers, and uh, we've been very excited with ILS. It's a different <coughs> program, like I say. It's not uh, really even discussed. My knowledge, we're the only school in the Bay Area. We may be the only school in California right now. We do know that it's all in clinics, uh, occupational therapy uh, clinics. And um, as we said before, these are the programs, and many times when you go to an OT, they're going to give you one of these programs, and they may not be able to complete the whole program, because sensory motor is 60 lessons, and <coughs> if it's your insurance paying or you're paying out of pocket, you know, at $100 a lesson, that sometimes is over people's price ranges. Um, concentration and attention is 40 lessons in reading and auditory processing is 40. But you can see where the, this is the lower frequencies and this is the middle frequencies and this is middle to the high frequencies. So if when they go through the whole program, they will have an experience in kind of recharging all the, their um, kind of um, intuitiveness of that high frequency or the low frequency. So they're going to be calm and they're going to be able to hear all the letter sounds that are coming out. That's what we're thinking. Um, the ILS method works because of, of three <coughs> things. There's automaticity, hemispheric integration, and this reticular activating system. That sounds like, oh my gosh, what kind of language is that? And what they're saying is, a lot of this has to do with the cerebellum is they automatically are able to keep information. For example, if you're riding a bike, now you, you're at automatic level when you jump on that bike or you drive a car. If every time you got in the car and you had to think through the processes deliberately, then you, you had to relearn that. Well, ILS helps with the, that piece because it is really actively um, engaging the cerebellum. And the cerebellum is what keeps things automatic, which teaches you automatic learning. Um, hemispheric integration is that crossover using both sides of your brain. And the reticular activating system is a piece that comes from the brain stem and it's the one that keeps the brain alert. Many times, like I said previously, the ADHD brain many times is not an energized brain. It's not alert. For the cortex to think, it has to be awake. And our cortex is awake through this RAS system. And if that is not functioning well because of the cerebellum, then you're going to have kind of a tired brain. And so that's where some of this ILS does jumpstart it. You really see them a little bit more alert. We've heard in the elementary, sometimes when they come back, they just are a little bit more focused. So we're taking, <coughs> kind of taking a look at that. Um, the ILS claims because of the ability of the brain to mold itself, neuroplasticity, 
It improves the cellular function by increasing all the connectivity of the subcortical structures. And I know that's just brain talk, but what they're saying is we're making the behind the scenes more efficient so the thinking brain can really do its thing. So um, it's kind of having the high octane in your gas tank. You know, it's, it's really giving you the best, um, the best place for energy. And what happens with ILS? It does improve cerebellar function. It stimulates the vagus nerve, which accounts for the behavior change. And the one thing with the vagus nerve, it runs all the way through our body. So it not only ma it makes you more functional, it makes your sleep habits better, it makes your digestion better. This vagus nerve is kind of a culprit to a lot of tummy troubles for younger children. And um, they're finding after ILS, some of that is shifted a bit. Um, it brings efficiency to the elements of sound the brain is processing. So uh, the subcortical organization is what's key, and that's what ILS is addressing. Not the cortex, and we're not giving them a workbook to be thinking, it's not their thinking brain, but all this behind the scenes makes their thinking brain more efficient. Talking about different sounds that have the higher and lower frequencies, you can see as it gets into the higher frequencies, some of the letters that kids have trouble pronouncing, even their younger children that are in speech. It's the higher frequencies sometimes that they have trouble with, with um, reproducing. And there's a theory in learning that those who can hear more of the auditory spectrum have an advantage in learning. And for the most part is they're picking up all the language and all the language sounds. They're not hearing parts of speech. So what now? Well, right now with ILS, there is a study that we're doing case studies of our <coughs> uh, 10 graduates. And we'll have, hopefully, in, um, by 2014, we'll have all the, um, all the, the data ha will be interpreted and we can share that out with everybody. We're starting to observe our new students coming into kindergarten. Do they have similar patterns to previous kindergartens? And if so, what do we notice with different programs that they're um, introduced to? Uh, we're observing and recording improvements and changes in students, their behavior, their emotional um, control, and their academics. And then we're looking to see how can we offer this program to the fourth through eighth grade. Yes, it would have a totally different look, but we were, there's many children in our upper grades that this wasn't available to. So those are some things that are coming coming forward. And so actually ILS is a 21st century tool to support student success.